Welcome to Belgrade Fortress. Belgrade Fortress is placed on the confluence on the river Sava and Danube in between old city Belgrade and new Belgrade now. The Zindan Gate uh, was made in the 15th century as a part of the fortification defense of the Danube side of the fortress. It is built near the, the donjon Kula from Despasefan from 15th century. The church is made in 15th century and uh, for the prey of the soldiers and it is dedicated to St. George, Serbian St. George. Nebuša Tower is uh, only a survived tower from the 15th century, made uh, as a defense on the bank on the river Sava, near to Confluence River Sava and the Danube. We can see now the Saha Tower, which is originally made by uh, Ottomans, but finished by Austrians. We can see the Baroque roof and the stone tower. The Victory Monument originally is made for the celebration of the 10 years of the end on the First World War by uh, Croatian sculptor Ivan Mestrovic. The first original place for the monument was uh, in Terazia Square in the city center. And ladies didn't want to see naked guy in the city center. After that, the monument was kept in the atelier. Ten years later, he is placed on the last point of the fortress, so far away of the city center that nobody can see him. Welcome to Viminatium, an old antique town which was built in the first century after Christ. This is the Royal Mausoleum, the place where Emperor Hostilianus, the second emperor born in Serbia, he was cremated inside of the central part. The graves on the side from the, from the mausoleum, they are from the 3rd, from the 5th century and they are from the different tribes which lived here in Viminatium. This is the place where the reconstruction of the amphitheater was made. It was built on the original base. It was a place where the gladiator and wild animal fights were held and it had a capacity of seven to 9,000 seats. The mammoth is approximately between 800,000 and 1 million years old. Her dimensions were four and a half to five meters tall, five and a half to six meters long, 10 tons heavy, and she ate something around 150 to 200 kilograms of herbs, plants a day just to survive. This is a Roman villa. It's imagined to look like a home of a Roman officer from the antique age. It has five big atriums, which are hotel rooms. Also, together with that, we have our laboratory, we have the library, the restaurant, and a museum. In the museum, we have three levels. In, on the first level, you can see the statue of Constantine the Great. In the second, you can see the model of the city. And in the third, you can see the monogram of Christ and all of the 18 rulers of the Roman Empire, which, which were born in Serbia. The name of this fortress is a Golubac fortress, uh, the fortress uh, which uh, they built on here on the right side of the Danube uh, River. Uh, the fortress uh, probably was built by the end of the 13th or beginning of the 14th century. This fortress uh, was important because uh, the savage possessed the fortress. They could control the traffic on earth and also the traffic here on the Danube River. And there is a story that fortress was connected with the big chain with that rock over there. So the boats, if they wanted to pass inside or outside from the gorge, they must pay some toll. And now, in, after reconstruction, which happened uh, between 2014 and 2019 year, uh, we have one permanent exhibition in our palace. Uh, name of that exhibition is Divine Inspiration. That is a story about the oldest Serbian manuscript Miroslav Gospel. General Lepeski is important for whole Europe because uh, it is located in Iron Gate area where one of the first people emerged and started to live on the open space in Europe. Lepeski Vir itself is a, a location where first people uh, came around 9500 BC. Just after Ice Age, uh, people went out from the caves and they started to research how to live in the open space. So this changing uh, was actually happening here in Iron Gate area and Lepeski Vir is something like peak and highest level of development of this group of people in this area. But very important period was around 6300 BC. It is the period when they formed the settlement, one of the first in organized settlements in Europe, and they started to live organized way of life. 
but they were still a Mesolithic culture, which means they were still hunters, fishermen, and food gatherers. And uh, they formed the, the, the settlement uh, by constructing several houses, very specific, they had a very specific architecture here. So we made this replica in order to show them how their inner space looked like more than 8,000 years ago. Welcome to Tirana. We are at the George Castriotis Kenderbeck Square, which was built in 1917. In 1968, it was named after our national hero who fought against the Ottomans in the 15th century. In Albania, we have four different religions. Muslims, which are believed to be the majority of the population, Catholics, Orthodox and Bektashi, a lesser known, more liberal Muslim sect. The Resurrection Cathedral, built in 2012, is considered to be among the largest Orthodox churches in the Balkans. The bell tower is composed of four Pascal candles, which symbolize the four evangelists who proclaimed the Resurrection. This is the clock tower of Tirana. It was built in 1822 in Islamic style by Etehem Bey Mola, who also built the nearby mosque. This is the St. Paul's Cathedral, which was built in 2001. It is dedicated to St. Paul because it's believed that in year 1 AD he was passing through Albania blessing the local people. It is a modern looking building and does not resemble a traditional church. Welcome to the castle of Berat, one of the biggest still inhabited castles, not only in Albania but also in southeastern Europe. The first mention of this castle is from the 6th century BC. What we see today is mainly from the Byzantine times, during the 13th century. Throughout that period, the settlement expanded and defensive walls and additional entrances were built. This castle used to have 24 defensive towers and 4 main entrances, and we are passing through what used to be the biggest and most important one. Mainly inhabited by Orthodox population, it's believed that it encompassed around 30 Orthodox churches. Apollonia is a Greek colony in Illyrian lands. It's dating back to the end of 7th century before Christ, and colonies from Corinth choose out this place because of its good geographical position. But Lusso artifacts prove that humans was living here since Mesolithic and Neolithic period too. During Hellenistic period, Apollonia started to play a very important role in the social, economical and cultural life of the area. Here we see the Odeon. It is a small theater dating back to Roman period, 2nd century AD, and it is used especially for the elite of the city, for musical and letter parties. It is the most important building of Apollonia, the monument of Agonothets or the Bauleterion. So let's say the city council building of Apollonia, dating back to 2nd century AD, in the front part, we see the use of the Corinthian style at the capitals and the columns, but as well, we can recognize at the architravum an inscription in Greek ancient language. The monastery is built 13th century, Byzantine style. It is all built over the ruins of the ancient city. So inside this monastery, we will find the church, which is in the center of the courtyards. There is the refectory representing the dining room and also the rooms where the monks was living, as well as the storage, which is in the first floor of the monastery. The richest part of the monastery is in the second floor of the monastery, where we'll find thousands of objects since the Bronze and Iron Age, and also related to the foundation and the development of the city since 7th century before Christ until to the end of the life of the city. Welcome to the old town of Podgorica. This area was occupied by the Ottomans in the second half of the 15th century and onward it started to get these uh, characteristics of Ottoman architecture. Clock Tower is one of the last 
remaining monuments from the Ottoman era. It was built in the 17th century, completed in the year 1667. It had also defensive function, which we can tell by the loopholes over there for the guns. House of uh, Kibranovic uh, family dates from the 1630 and it is the certified the oldest house in the uh, old town of Podgorica. As a decorative element, quite often we can see the kibitz fenster, uh, Ottomans would say doksat, which is basically closed terrace. So now we are at uh, Skaline or so-called uh, Sastavci and here we can find the uh, 18th century old bridge which was also mentioned in the Roman times in the 15th century as well but the one that we can see nowadays here it's actually from the 18th century. Duklea or Doklea was founded in the first century during the rule of Roman Emperor Octavian. So in the first half of the first century, this uh, ancient settlement started to develop. In front of us, we can see the remains of uh, the very center of this uh, settlement, uh, Forum. There were workshops and shops, so it was also for a trading and meeting of the local people. On the left side, there was Basilica. In a, a time of the ancient Rome, Basilica was a public building. And inside, there was a Roman magistrate, let's say, also the archives, the registry books as well. So it was for public use. We can see here uh, remains of big terme. Let's say that was quite important social site of this area here. Inside people could find gymnasium to work out, but also the cold room, hot room actually. And they were meeting over there even for a business. So Budva is the capital of tourism in Montenegro, the most popular, most visited town. In the same time, Budva is a very ancient town. It was founded in 5th century before Christ. About that we have many references and what is most important, material evidences. On this square we can see a stone which is exactly from Roman period. It was a Roman altar where people would uh, give, uh, bring some gifts to a god as a gratitude. For example, wine and olive oil. This is what they would bring on this uh, altar part here. We are now on the Square of Salt, it's known uh, like that, but uh, we like to call it the Square of Six Churches. The oldest one is 5th century, the youngest one is 19th century. Citadel today is a place with amazing view, the highest point of the town and one of the favorite places exactly of the um, old tourists. But in the past it had defensive uh, uh, function and all people from town, if someone attack, would hide inside of Citadel. The Museum of Budva is founded in 2003. The most important and valuable artifact is a mosaic floor from the 2nd century AD. It is one of the oldest mosaics found in the Balkans. Uh, here on the first floor uh, there are clay vessels of various shapes and purposes from the Hellenistic period from the 4th to 2nd century BC. This part uh, was under Romans uh, starting from the 1st century BC until 4th century AD, so it is about 500 years. These are remains of the Roman uh, villa uh, from the 2nd century AD. We have uh, mosaics here, seven pieces. That mosaic uh, that we are looking at uh, was covering the room used as the salon uh, for receptions for guests. This is uh, the room used as the bedroom. In the very center is the god of sleep, uh, Hypnos, that according to mythology was the father of the god called Morpheus. Beside Hypnos you can see here motifs of uh, bows and arrows and uh, you can see uh, the wolf teeth uh, that was symbol for the legend about Romulus and Remus. The old city of Kotor has a classic medieval merchant town layout. Every square has something beautiful to be seen, the cathedral, the churches, noble family palaces, and much more. Perast was a city whose main purpose was defense, but today it is known mostly for its Baroque architecture, which is regarded as the most beautiful in the entire Adriatic coast. Gospel Skrpila is the most iconic church in the entire bay, a man-made island with the most beautiful church you can imagine. 